Hi guys, I'm here with my mate Florencia Juan Palo and we are going to discuss about the latest history published by the New Yorker written by Subancom Tamabosa. This history is called Trash and it goes to show how much more inclusive the culture has become because she's a minority, she's an Asian woman, uh, she was born in Thailand and when she was one year old she was sponsored by a family, by a Canadian family. She moved to Toronto, Ontario, and what makes it even more special is that she never took an MFA course. And yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. So. Uh, well, to give some context, uh, Trash is a short story, and it is about a woman that works as a supermarket cashier. She fell in love with one of her customers, and then they got married. And but it mainly goes about the, the relationship that this woman has with her mother-in-law. Uh, the author actually got inspired in a song by Tracy Chapman called Fast Car. And if you know the song and have read the story, you will find very many points in common. <coughs> well, the narrator is one of the main characters in the story. She is, because um, it's <laughs> she is a supermarket cashier. Um, well, you want to add something? Uh, yes, she. I believe that what is important here is that she is very proud of having a show and being able to maintain herself, like to make a living out of it. Um, doesn't care much that she is working as a cashier. She even enjoys it. Yes, she loves work uh, to, in the supermarket. Um, as a um, this could be related to how she had kind of a rough upbringing, if you want, because she, when she was a, when she finished high school, both of her parents died, and she had to get the job in order to pay a house, in order to do everything. So she may be proud of it now because it allows it allows her to to maintain her life, to have a house, to pay for food, for everything, for clothes. Yes, because it's pretty difficult to lose your parents mm -hmm. when you're a teenager, finishing high school. Um, well, she is one of the main characters. <laughs> uh, well, these three have three characters. Um, well, we recently mentioned um, the narrator, who is a um, supermarket cashier, but now we are going to discuss about one of the strongest main characters of this history, who is Miss Emily. Well, at first she shows herself as a very caring person, a very good person. She just, at first she goes to her shop, to the narrator's shop, to the supermarket, they after that they go to dinner, they have dinner, they talk with each other, they exchange stories, and even after that she takes uh, the narrator to to the mall, they they shop for clothes, they spend a lot of time there, she's still treating her very well, but then it all changes. Yes, maybe at first you think that all these uh, things they do together, it's to bond with each other, but later on you maybe realize that maybe the intentions that Miss Emily has, they are not so good. Um, she's trying to mani manipulate. Yes, I believe that in a way she's trying to, to change her, to change the narrator, uh, to the idea that she has of what is best for her son. Maybe. Yes, change the narrator's life because she don't want a daughter-in-law who is a supermarket cashier who work uh, in a supermarket. Yes, because it's not only changing her physical image, she also uh, is really invested on making her keep on their, her studies and maybe trying to get a new show in the future, but it's like the narrator's life, you know. Yes, and the narrator is very proud of, of work in a supermarket. 
Yes, I think that she was very proud, but start to pay yes. questions about it once she gets to know Miss Emily and she gets inside of her mind. It's okay um, work as a cashier or I should study law or something like that, I think. Okay, so now to talk about Miss Emily's son. It's fair to say that we don't know much about him. We don't have any physical information about him. Uh, we don't have any physical information about nobody. But from him, we only know that he's polite, he's funny, he dresses well, uh, he's a person of status, he has money. Yes, he wears a suit also. He's like a businessman, we can say that. Yes, he's a, a guy that you see in the street and you think that he has money, so... Exactly, that's the point. Like, his role in the story is not like... It's not that he says anything important or that he does anything important. He just marries the, the narrator and he's the connector between... Emily? Miss Emily. Miss Emily and her daughter-in-law, the narrator. And well, it's not an important character. Um, the only thing that is important is that he is, um, I don't know how to say it. The connection. The connection, exactly. The connection between Emily and the narrator. There is an anecdote in this story that is told by Miss Emily, and it is uh, the one where she says that her son always bring things that need to be fixed to her. She talks about uh, injured vision, vision, I think, in, in yeah. the story. Uh, and maybe we can interpret it, it like uh, he is bringing the narrator to her in order to, to fix. be fixed. Yes. To uh, fix mostly her. we can think that because of how the how manipulative Miss Emily can be? Maybe. Well, in fact, um, Emily's son is a secondary character. Character? Yes, I believe that the important is as you both said. Both said. Uh, the connection. Yes, the connection. The connection. Now we should talk about another point in the history. Maybe the meaning of crush um, in the history and how it changed? I don't know what... Well, yes, uh, I read in an interview that was made, was made to the author that... Suankam Tamagonsa? Yes, uh, and it says that how I realized that the first word you see in the story is trash and it's also the last one. Um, also, she's talk about the last sentences it was actually the beginning of the story in a point, but then she realized it was better to close the story. Uh, and it's also like you can think uh, throughout the story that that trash gets different meanings, but at the end maybe you can realize that it's how the narrator is feeling. She's feeling like trash because of what Miss Emily is doing to her? Yes, what is trash is Emily's behavior. Um, I think uh, trash is like, when you say somebody's trash, it's like you're talking about uh, a person of low status. Like, imagine you are a person that lives in the street or something. Like, uh, Miss Emily and the narrator both kind of go from trash to improving themselves. Of course, Miss Emily goes way farther than the narrator that still works in a, in a supermarket. And I think that's the, one of the things that generates conflict between them, the difference in status. Maybe it, it, it's not that, but the different meanings of success that each one of them has. Maybe for the narrator, it will be able to live by her own means, like maintain herself, it's enough, and she's proud because she's doing it by getting a show, and a decent show, because it's not... Yes, she is not doing nothing Yes, wrong. it's 
a normal show, but sometimes people can be judgy, maybe. Um, but well, and then Mrs. Emily, I believe that she maybe it's more traditional and believes that uh, a person, in order to be successful, has to finish her studies, get a degree. Um, also, if you are a woman, you have to have a good house, be a good wife, and all that things that more traditional people believe. Well, success, um, the meaning of success is different for each person. Uh, for Miss Emily, success uh, was her money, um, a nice house. Um, maybe for the narrator, uh, success is more related with happiness. Uh, what do you think? Yes, that it was enough for her with being able to afford and make a living out of her shop and yes, to have room to to her happiness. Yes, um, in this story uh, we can see another difference between Miss Emily and the narrator that that is the, the house of the narrator. Uh, she thinks that it's all alright, but for Miss Emily, all is completely horrible and it's a disaster. Um, yes, it's a mess. Um, she, here we can see also what it means to be successful, because maybe Miss Emily believes that uh, it's the narrator's job to keep the house clean and in order to, to be successful. Um, yes, and the narrator need to be a housewife. Mm. Yes, and maybe it's not so bad. What I mean, it depends of, on the person that is in there. Exactly. Uh, but um, I also think that maybe it's important that uh, overall the narrator at the end, uh, Miss Emily tried to make her feel like trash, but even at the end she is outside. And she realized that she, she is, is not, not trash. trash. Um, well, to conclude, what do you think about the history? If you need to put a mark, we can say to the history. Uh, I don't know, a rating. <laughs> well, I get a uh, six out of ten. Uh, basically, I think it's, it lacks detail, we don't have any physical information about them. I think that some of the information is kind of irrelevant and I, it's not a genre that I really enjoy. I, I like more uh, fantasious stories, to say. I don't know, for me it could be um, eight, uh, I think it's kind of realistic, but it's a little bit cliche, I don't know, maybe? Yes, maybe. I agree with you, so I will give it a date also. Uh, I like it, but as you say, like this idea of getting a bad relationship with your mother-in-law, it's yes. a bit cliche. Um, but I like it that it's like centered in the relationships that they have mostly the, in describing so much and it's just... Yes, the physical appearance is not important. Yes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we all agree that uh, part that we should highlight in the story is the ending, right? Yes. Uh, the part where the, the argument between Miss Emily and the narrator just happened and she went outside and she realized that when seeing a raccoon looking in the trash, she realized that she is not trash, really. I don't know if you have anything to say about it. I completely agree with you. I think it is so metaphorical, the fact that it is a raccoon and she see the reality. That she is a person, she is not trash. Um, she's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, basically that's what I think, like she feels, she starts feeling like trash, she starts wondering if she's ever done something wrong or if she has to change herself, and then when she is about to be treated like trash, she realizes that she's not trash, that's the, 
the teaching that I get from that. Yes, it was a good uh, short story. Could be better. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye guys. Bye. bye.